This episode I'm going to call Secrets from a Multi-Platinum Artist. But they're not really secrets because this information is out there for you guys. But I read this and I thought you're really, really going to like it. So let's do this. Whoa! I spent the last 14 years playing over a thousand shows, touring 22 different countries and become a top 40 billboard charting artist. I fired my record label to go out on my own as an independent artist to market and release my own music, selling thousands of albums and millions of streams. The question I always get is, how did I do it without a label and sell even more music? This podcast is here to show you the way. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply and share marketing strategies to grow my music business in a loyal fan base. What's up guys? So really stoked to share uh, an email I read the other day talking about the rapper Logic. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, but he's toured with Eminem and done some pretty, pretty massive stuff. He has that really famous song 188 something. It's like the suicide hotline kind of song. And uh, I was reading this article and it was talking about how um, these labels and companies are really starting to analyze data and we're starting to be able to get access to crazy data. Spotify has kind of really, you know, um, championed that for us as artists. And, you know, what are people streaming? What are people saving? What are people skipping? What are people playing the whole song of? And just really watching the, the patterns so that we can find out, you know, where the hits are, you know, where the hit songs are. And so anyways, um, Logic's label was really following this and seeing that his song, that 188, whatever hotline song is, um, was just getting crazy amounts of play and response and it was just basically doing well. They saw that it was doing well and doing way better than his other songs. And so what did they do? They doubled down, they tripled down and put more and more money into that thing and blew it up and blew it up and blew it up. And I'll tell you, that is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I make is I don't do that sometimes. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I'm doing it right now with a song because we're getting an insane reaction to it. But if you're getting a good response from a song, shoot the video, okay? Spend crazy money on the ads, on Facebook, on Spotify, radio, if it, if it um, has that opportunity. You know what I mean? Like go full throttle because that's the world we're living in right now is singles. But what do we want to do as artists? Oh, I'm an artist. I'm just going to move on to the next thing. You know, my wife literally told me off the other day. She's like, you are not moving on to another song. You're promoting this song plan for me and you're promoting it and you're promoting your pro. She's like, I am not letting you move on to this because there's another song off the record that uh, I really, really like. And I sent it to a radio promoter um, in the mainstream market in the USA because the one we're marketing right now is kind of more in the Christian market. But this other one um, isn't more mainstream. And anyways, these guys freaking love it, and it's, it's a good song. She's like, and I was talking to her about it, because, you know, I'm the type of guy that has a million things going on. She's like, no, like, stop. Like, why are you even reaching out to them? She's like, focus on this one song, because we've just been getting... Uh, an insane response. I even had somebody from uh, Sweden reach out to me today wanting to do an article and interview me and stuff. And just like the crazier things, like there's just conversation, there's just a buzz about it. So it's like, I need to double down on this and just really get it out there. And um, that requires focus. Follow one course until it's successful. I was kind of like I got to, you know, eat my uh, own words. In my book, Fighter, I talk about discipline. Well, I need to freaking discipline myself right now and just say, hey, Chris, like, focus on this. Blow it up. Blow it up, man. And so, yeah, we have done a music video. It, um, it premiered with a... Uh, an online magazine yesterday and today and uh, as of recording this <laughs> um, but uh, th- um, now it's going to go live on YouTube and then once it's live on YouTube then I can start running ads to it and just juice it up like already the song on YouTube just the song itself just the audio has over 180 comments 180 freaking comments like people are freaking out about this and um, which is great and so that means like again I need to double down I need to pour f- fuel on the fire you know like I'm already running Facebook ads on it and it's crazy again I'm just seeing the shares share 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 abnormal amounts of shares and so again this is more reason to uh to promote it and today I did some stuff for radio to try and get it on radio because we had it already in radio in Canada um we're going after the U.S. 
And then I got to figure out some markets for it in the UK and stuff like that. And this is more of a Christian audience for this one. So it's not as, you know, global, um, as much like Japan does not have a Christian market. Um, and, uh, that's, that's one thing I used to always get asked, dude, manifest, I want to blow up in Japan, dude, I want to blow up in Japan like you. And, you know, people didn't understand, like, it wasn't because I was a Christian artist, it was just because it was good music and, and they dug it, you know, it didn't matter. And sometimes that's the case, but I want to stay focused here on this whole logic thing and labels and studying and looking at the data and logging into your artists at Spotify, watching the streams, watching the YouTubes and seeing, and that's what's really dope about the singles world that we're in because when you just release a whole album at a time, you know, one song doesn't really get that love. And, and if you can like, you know, take some time to really look at the numbers and give each song a fighting chance. Like sometimes you just do not know which song is going to hit, but once you figure out which one that is, you freaking pour fire on it. I remember being in a, in a, a, a meeting with the label and, and, and again, I was really stupid about this. Okay. I was, we had my song avalanche and it was blowing up at radio. It sold just tens of thousands of singles and um, just sold over a hundred thousand copies of that album. We didn't know that that song was going to be the hit. We thought this other song fire in the kitchen was going to be anyways. It turned out that avalanche was okay. A lot of people have bitten me now and written other songs called avalanche, but anyways, Oh, I'm a trendsetter. No, just kidding. Okay. So anyways, it was, it was doing good. And I remember again, as an artist, Oh, I got to release the next record. Got to release the next record. Cause everything I touch is gold and I'm just so freaking amazing. And I remember him saying to me, Chris, like we can still push this record. And I remember saying that I wanted to go to active rock. I wanted to go to mainstream rock. You know, Christian radio wasn't good enough. I wanted active rock. I wanted the big rock channels. And I remember I wanted to take one of my new songs to that. And I'll never forget him saying, why don't we take one of your old songs? Like, why wouldn't you just do that? Because, you know, that's already tried and tested. But of course I know everything and I'm so smart. We ended up going with um, a song. Uh, we ended up going with my song fighter active rock. I got a few stations, but I knew that song's not a hit. I know from the data, it's not a hit. I know that from, from a response from fans, it's not a hit. We should have gone with another song and lesson learned. Okay. I jumped the gun and wanted to move on to something else when I should have stayed. We should have doubled down and probably we could have probably sold, you know, I think we, we sold over a hundred thousand copies of that album. We probably could have sold two, three, maybe even four if we just stayed focused and kept pushing it. Cause there's a, guess what guys, there's a big freaking world out there. There's a way bigger world than your stupid Instagram and your stupid Facebook. Okay. You posting it to your followers and getting a few friends and you think that you've promoted your song. What are you freaking nuts? No, no, you haven't. Am I freaking nuts? Oh, well, I've promoted it. It went out to my Spotify followers. Okay, I've promoted it. I've done enough work. I'm just going to move on to the next thing. No, don't be an idiot like me. Stay, double down, especially if it's working. Focus, promote that junk. Sure, you can release another song. I am releasing another song in a few weeks, but you better believe I need to stay freaking focused on this. All right? I need to keep my money focused on this, on what's working. All right. Um, what's the, what's the saying? Um, the man who tries to catch two birds catches none, you know, two birds in the hand or one bird in the hand is better than two in the bush or some stupid like that. But anyways, I just hope that encourages you look at the data, see what's working. And honestly, I don't even care if it's one of your older songs. If it's one of your older songs, go re-promote it. Go, go re-release it. Get a better mix on it. Get a feature on it. I don't know. Go create a music video for it. Create a new lyric video or take that music video and, and promote the junk of it on Facebook ads. You know, that's what one of, one of the ads where I spent 10 grand on, on Facebook was a music video from, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And, you know, it just freaking killed it for me. So I encourage you, do what works. Stop trying to create the new thing when you, when you don't even need to, all right? So, hey, I want to encourage you, if you're not a member of Fanbase University, get over there because as I'm recording this, our next member call is tomorrow, which is the 12th and 24th of every month. I don't know when you're listening to this, but uh, you need to get on there. You need to ask some questions. You need to hang out with us. You need to get a free copy of my book, Fighter, sent to you and to encourage you and to inspire you because I want to see you crush this. Hey, I want to remind you that a fighter isn't someone who never fails. A fighter is someone who never quits. So don't quit, baby.
Peace. So if you're a struggling artist and you're just trying to figure out this music industry, you want to go full time with your music, you want to get noticed on social media or learn how to launch an album, an EP, or just get your music more marketed out there, I want to encourage you to check out my coaching program called Fanbase University. Every single month, I jump on the phone two times with my students and I coach them and I teach them how to market their music, how to get noticed, how to handle booking agents, record labels, and just get their music out there. Also, you get access to exclusive training. You get in interviews with music industry professionals. If you want to find out more and not do this on your own, not struggle because I've wasted thousands of dollars on my career and I, now I want to coach other artists. Check out my program, Fanbase University. Dot com or click the link below to find out more info.